So ever since, I'd say, lockdown, the growth of sim racing has grown massively, mainly because that's the only solution real life drivers had at the time. And also real life drivers ah! coming together and making content with each other. Like, uh, remember the Twitch Cotret? Yeah, that was an era. But that's not all, you know, esports has become a bigger thing. And even a movie made out of it. But I, I didn't really like that movie. But today, we're gonna be talking about a game from a time that sim racing wasn't as popular, and that's R Factor 1. To all of you new to sim racing, which I probably count in that group, because I only started sim racing in 2021, but I consumed a lot of sim racing YouTube back then. Like, I remember this one channel, which I think was a photography channel, but also made R Factor crash compilations. I don't know what happened to that channel, because it's gone, all the videos are gone. So if you're watching, uh, let me know. But anyways, back to the point. For all of those new to sim racing, R Factor 1 is pretty much the original Assetto Corsa. You can get any track you want, you can get any kind of car you want, GT cars, old F1 cars, even Formula E cars. You can get them, endurance cars too. There also may be some free roam maps that I'm not so sure, I have to check that out again. But I ask, how good is R Factor 1 in 2024? Because it's literally older than me, and it used to be the main software that F1 teams would use for their sims. And I think they actually still use it, but not R Factor 1, um, R Factor Pro. BMW Sauber, I think they admitted to using R Factor 1 in their sims, and they even launched a special edition car, I think the F1.06 to coincide with the R Factor release, but only as a special edition. The mod I'm gonna be using today is the CTDP 2006. I think it's the best R Factor mod in my opinion. I could probably use 2005 because 2005 was the last year of the V10 engines, but it can't work with my computer for some reason. Some honorable mentions, RFT 2008 and 2011. LMT 2010, Patrick 34's F1 2017, that's actually a really good R Factor 1 mod, and I'll probably look into it in another video. So here we go, here's playing this game that's older than me in 2024. So we are now in the menu of R Factor 1 with this sort of spinning thing in the menu. I don't know what you call it. This is a very simple menu because you have just to customize and it has all your settings here. This is basically to race and this is for online. Believe it or not, kids, R Factor used to have a very simple layout and not this confusing mumbo jumbo we used to have in R Factor 2. But let's look through the vehicles. We obviously have the Mild 7 Renault F1 team with the glorious man there, Fernando Alonso. Alonso. And you can also look through different skins and different liveries they use throughout the year. I think that's pretty f I think that's pretty cool. You can see your team spirit that was pretty much used to cover up the mild seven, which if you didn't know, mild seven is actually tobacco. Different upgrades we have. You can see here track configuration, some aero bits change on the car, which is really cool. I think I think the new F1 game should implement this. Man, a modding team from 2005 does this, but Codemasters can. Anyways, let's look at the other cars, shall we? Intel, BMW, Sauber, obviously Nick Heidfeld and Robert Kibitza. I said obviously with Nick Heidfeld, even though uh, Robert Kibitza is undo undoubtedly the more popular driver. Honda with Rubens Barrichello. Rubens! 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 Rubens Barrichello do Brasil! Brasil! I think this is his first year after Ferrari and Jensen Button who won his first race. Now the McLaren Mercedes F1 team with Kimi Raikkonen and Pedro De La Rosa. There's actually supposed to be a certain Juan Pablo Montoya here but he left mid-season to do NASCAR. I don't know why he left for NASCAR, he was still really capable of driving an F1 but hey he can do whatever he wants and he's also a top five favorite driver of mine. We can now move on to Midland slash Spiker. We have a very confusing history with this. They used to be Jordan. If you didn't know, these guys are right now um, Aston Martin. Rolf Schumacher and Jarno Trulli. Um, Jarno Trulli, I'm pretty sure, returned to Toyota right after his stint with Renault. Right after he won a race with Renault in 2004. I forgot what the reason was, but A, Trulli Train. Red Bull Racing and um, the first year of Red, uh, the second year of Red Bull actually. And it's uh, David Coulthard and Robert Dunbos. This car is mostly remembered for David Coulthard's podium at the t that, at the Monaco Grand Prix with um this livery, the Superman livery. I think the Star Wars one is better, mainly because 
I'm a Star Wars fan. I know you can bully me all you want for that. Next, we have the Scuderia Ferrari Marlboro team. This was Michael Schumacher's last year in F1. You can see that interesting suit they got on him there. And Felipe Massa's first year for Ferrari. Oh wait, I have to correct myself. Um, it wasn't Schumacher's last year in F1. It was only his last year for Ferrari. He was in a pretty decent fight with Fernando Alonso, but but um, Alonso that year just a better driver overall and um his teammate Giancarlo Fisichella finished fourth for crying out loud Felipe Massa was third next we have the Toroso with Vit Antonio Liozzi and Scott Speed the GOAT Scott Speed the last American in F1 before Alexander Rossi in 2015 but only for like a few races I'm pretty sure this is also the last F1 car with a V10 engine and it was also the first ever Toroso F1 car right after buying it out from Minardi. Yeah, a brilliant livery. I missed like the old aggressive uh, bronze. I missed the old aggressive Toro Rosso livery. They don't do it like this anymore, man. And the uh, Vitantino Luzzi, the GOAT. He actually kind of looks like Ilkay Gundogan. Next, we have the Super Aguri F1 team with Takuma Sato and Sakon Yamamoto. Yeah, I remember Sakon. Uh, not from this specific year, but I do remember him in the HRT in 2010. Next, we have the Williams in this beautiful RBS livery with Mark Webber and Nico Rosberg. Oh my days, that hair is majestic. I don't know why you made it short, Nico. You should have just kept it long. But to be fair, Rosberg with long hair looks too much like Jeremy Fragrance. All right, so enough of uh, looking through the cars. Let's just pick the Renault with Fernando Alonso because this was my favorite car from this year. A close second behind is probably the McLaren. I, re I really like the Johnny Walker on the side pod. And then third, maybe the Red Bull, then fourth, the Ferrari. But anyways, let's go for a drive at the Nürburgring. Now, this isn't the default Nürburgring in R-Factor. This is um, a mod. Maybe because I downloaded the R-Factor Lite version, not the full one. So, yeah. This probably has the best sounding uh, V6 era Renault engine out of every other sim. Now, heading into turn one. Interesting. A bit of a locking up. That's fine. Okay, I'm driving very terribly right now as we head on to Dunlop Curb. Curve, I mean. Ah. The handling, obviously, you'd expect it to feel great, and it does. There's, there's not much to talk about. I like how the brakes feel, and um, I'm going really slow on the straights, locking up again, miss my braking point massively. The force feedback, though, I tell you, it's really strong, and I have it set to like a low setting should probably stop locking up all right that was a 139.93 he's way better than jeff all right 10 seconds off of pole let me try and put a setup in and then i'll see how it goes i'm not gonna try and stay i'm, I'm not gonna try and beat the pole lap just not try and be extremely far off the pace Nearly touched the wall. And it's gonna be... 38.5. Nine seconds off the pace, but... Screw it, one more lap. I made a mistake in one of the corners. I ran wide.
I don't think that was a good lap. All right, all right, 38.4. I can live with that. Eight seconds off the pace. So I guess it's um, it's time to go for a race. Hopefully the AI will be as slow as me. All right, how does the starting grid look like? We're starting fourth behind Ralph Schumacher, Christian Albers, and uh, Vit Antonio Liuzzi. Looking down the grid, Schumacher in 13th behind Raikkonen. So Schumacher's nightmare is actually a thing. And Della Rosa starting last. What? Okay. I didn't know we were ready in 2012. Anyways, uh, yeah, let's do a five. Let's go for the five lap race. Waiting for the four red lights, it seems. It isn't five. Oh, jump start. Um... See, I got a penalty for that, unlike Lando Norris in Saudi Arabia. Or Sebastian Vettel in Japan. The leaders having a bit of a scrap. I forgot who was on pole. Okay, up, oh, contact, and I spin. And it was Vitantonio Liuzzi. Let's restart. Poor start. Mass up our inside. Or contact with Ralph Schumacher. At least we didn't do an Australia 2002. Okay, come on. Jensen. That's a bit naughty. Squeezing me into the inside there. Lost the back end. Just rear lock. Going through the Mercedes-Benz arena. Mr. Felipe Massa runs slightly wide. It's fine. Track limits rules were different in these days anyways. Just keep it composed. Don't spin. You can see Christian Alvarez dropping some positions. Look at the speed we carry through the Schumacher S. Alright, braked early. I don't know. Don't want to happen what did on the last attempt. Sorry for my terrible English there. Oh, nice run off the corner. You can overtake Massa going into the chicane. Can overtake Massa, but I will avoid Albers. Oh my. Hey, he got the chicane. Where's Palmer? Fernando Palmer has retired. Karma has stuck in my head. All right, we have Fisichella chasing us. He's not gonna overtake. Let's go down the inside of Christian Albers as well. Thank you very much. And we're now P3. Trying to chase the leaders. I'm pretty sure Lutzi and Ralph Schumacher. I'm guessing Schumacher's the leader now. Lucy just got overtaken. You don't really have that much information. It's very minimal, which is which I'm fine with. I can't really see the gaps because it's on the f bottom right of the screen. And I'm not going to look down there every time. It must be my peripheral vision as I just attempt a brilliant overtake, even though I locked up, but it's fine. Running up the chicane now. The AI can cut the chicane, so can I. It's a lap time looking like 39.3, not bad. I mean, it's terrible, but... Not, I, you know what, whatever. You also see a certain Giancarlo Fisichella in the virtual mirror. You're going really slow there, mate. Okay, Lucy just creeping behind. As Ralph Schumacher does his best. Yarno truly impression. I mean, they are both teammates, so he picked up a thing or two. Serious question, why is he so slow? That should be me. I'm driving as Fernando Alonso. I should be going as slow as possible. Not you. I didn't mean that in the sense that Alonso is slow. That's literally his drive. That's literally his defensive driving style. Sh Chicane, can we do anything here? All right, Fisichella has caught up to us now. This guy just incredibly slow. All right, we have a good run on him, finally. Oh, no, don't overtake me again. I'm just gonna go slow. Yes, Fisichella gets past as well. I made the AI too easy. I underestimated myself. Oh, grass, not good. Fisichella's gonna catch up now. No! Anyways, we're gonna cross the final... Yeah, we crossed the line. 38-4. And we win. We win. And um, I'm happy. There's a cooldown lap. What should we do in the cooldown lap? I don't know what to do. Whatever. hi -yah. I think damage is off. Uh, whatever. 
Anyways, what should we do next? Judging by the car, driver, and track combo, I think you can tell what we're about to do. I am up by 1.2 seconds, but just to be sure... Oh no! I mean, I made a mistake and um, Massa totally didn't just run into the back of me. We're definitely gonna get pulled now. Hey! Anyways. Let's, um, let's head into the conclusion of this video. So, what do I think about R Factor 1 in 2024? I think it's still really good if you want those early to late 2000s cars, maybe early 2010s as well. Unpopular opinion, I think I find it more enjoyable than Assetto Corsa, mainly because the Assetto Corsa AI ruins the experience for me a little bit. This game is still very much alive because there are still a lot of leagues in R Factor 1. In fact, me and a few friends a couple years ago, we made an R Factor 1 league. But for the offline players who want to play career mode, I think F1 Challenge 99-02 is still the better bet for you. Or just use an Excel sheet to keep track of your championship progression. That's what I did when I lost my F1 22 save file. So that's it for today's video. Let me know if you want to see more R Factor content or maybe F1 Challenge Edition. Until next time.